Hi guys, well today I am doing a first impression and demo on the Clinique. This is the Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer. Now, this is not a new uh, foundation from Clinique. It's been around about a year, but it's getting a lot of talk again recently. I think probably because Candy Johnson just did a video with it. Of course, it looked amazing on her, but then again, I'm one of those people I think everything looks amazing on Candy because she's just pretty um, and she has great skin and let's face it, she can make anything look good. She can make herself look like a cartoon for God's sake. So she can make everything look great. So anyway, I've seen a lot of other people talking about it recently. So I thought, you know what, let me try it. Um, it is supposed to be a full coverage foundation. Everything I'm hearing is that people think that it doesn't set um, very well. So you probably will need to powder. It is full coverage again. Um, and it's hard to find your shade, which I found to be very true. I watched a ton of videos trying to see people with similar skin tones, what they said. Everybody was different. It was so funny. Um, thinking, okay, well, let me just try a couple different ones. And some of them are sold out. So I ended up getting it in two different shades. Um, I did test it before I put it on and definitely I knew one probably wasn't gonna work because it has more of a gold undertone. So I ended up getting it in shade four, which is Cream Whip, and it has more of a gold undertone. I'm definitely not a gold undertone. I'm more of a neutral, slightly pink sometimes, but I usually like a neutral foundation to help cover up any pink or redness. The other one I got is number two, Alabaster, and it is a neutral. So you can see the difference hopefully between the two. Not a ton, but um, definitely the neutral is a little bit better. So if you're not familiar at all what this looks like, it definitely uh, is different. It has a doe foot applicator. So you can spot conceal with this and then you just rub it all over um, as a foundation and blend it in with whatever you like, be it a sponge or a makeup brush. I don't think I mentioned, this is a very affordable foundation. It's your typical one fluid ounce. It's only $27. That's the great thing about Clinique foundations. They're very affordable and they do make some other great foundations in their range. And if you're one of those people that are sensitive to things, the great things also about Clinique is they're allergy tested, 100% fragrance free. Even though I did mention the demo, it had a slight fragrance, but it went away and it didn't bother me. And you guys know I'm pretty sensitive to that stuff. So on the back of the bottle it actually says moderate to full coverage um, and a natural matte finish. So just to read you um, what the claims are, it says the benefits is it's moisturizing. Skin types or for all skin types. Um, a foundation and concealer in one for natural beyond perfected look that lasts all day. It's lightweight moisturizing um, and it covers thoroughly without clogging pores. Skin breathes comfortably, color stays true, even through sweat and humidity. So that's a big claim. For those of you who like maybe live in Texas or Florida, that would be a good uh, test to put it through. It says, due to the rich pigment level that enhances this flawless coverage makeup, shades may appear deeper when first applied. Once blended completely and allowed to dry, beyond perfecting makeup will melt into your skin for a beyond perfected flawless look. A little goes a long way. Now you'll see in the demo, I started out with a little bit, but I needed to add some because I was afraid of adding too much and getting the wrong impression of it right away. There are 20 shades on the Clinique website and there are 21 shades on the Sephora website. What I don't like on the Sephora site um, is, you know, lately with ever since they did like their foundation finder, it's been really easy to find a foundation because they tell you the undertone. Typically if you hover over your mouse over each shade, it'll tell you the undertone because it's not one of those like start out with the lightest and gradually get deeper. You know, you have to look at each one. So you may have a light one here and a light one here, but the undertones are totally different. Well, for some reason, this one, it doesn't do that. And I don't know if this just because Clinique didn't provide that or what, but I find that really easy to typically find a foundation because I can just know, okay, I know my shade and I know my undertone. Well, so that made it tricky. Again, that's why I had to watch a bunch of videos trying to figure out, okay, what did these people use? I'm similar, what can I try to make work? And then having also in the back of my mind uh, what Clinique's saying about it going on a little darker, but then, you know, melting in, all that stuff I had to take in consideration. So it's not just one of those foundations you can go, oh, I wear this shade, let me match it up to that. It may not work. So that is definitely the hardest thing about this and what I've heard from everyone else too is finding a shade is difficult. 
So let's go ahead and cut to the demo and then we'll chat back on the other side and I'll give you my final thoughts. So I'm using shade um, number two, I believe it is, yes, and it is alabaster. Although I don't think it looks all that um, light for something called alabaster. And this is actually, um, it says VF-N, which I'm guessing maybe stands for very fair neutral. Not sure about the VF, but it is a neutral. The other shade, again, I have is a gold. I tested both out right here. This is a little bit too gold. Um, and then this one is number four, Cream Whip. So we're gonna try this one out. It's a very thick, not sure, again, this is the applicator. I like though that most of it comes off there. So, um, you know, I don't really have a problem. I'm just gonna put on kind of how much ever I would normally and we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's not too much. It's a scent to it for sure. It's not terrible, but there's a scent. Because this is thicker, I'm gonna use the beauty blender. Pull the mirror a little closer here. Um, first, I don't know, it's a little tough to rub in, like to blend in, but that just could be because it's a thicker foundation. I feel like, I don't know, I might have um, gotten my beauty blender, wrung it out like a little too much today. That could be part of it as well. But I mean, it does blend. It's not like it doesn't blend at all because I've had some thicker foundations just not blend. So let's see what it does up here. But I feel like I'm having to work with it more than most. And I always just take kind of the excess over my eyelids. It's not like I purposely put um, a whole lot. Just, you know, blending. So I don't know, I would say that's not a terrible color match, you know, like I thought it might be. It's not bad, maybe I didn't put that much. I feel like I keep hearing people talk about it doesn't dry. It does not, I mean look, you can see I'm putting my hand all over my face and it's not like anything's coming off. To me it doesn't feel tacky or wet, so I know that seems to be a big complaint I hear from people. I don't get that. I'm starting to see it, I don't know if you can tell, right here. Uh, it's settling into some fine lines right here. I don't know if that's just me not blending it. Like when I get up close, I can see it. I, I don't know if you guys can see. Let me see if I can zoom you in. So this is probably about as close as you're gonna be able to get. I don't know if you can see, I feel like I can see it here sitting on top of my skin. If you're wondering, since you can see this real quick, this is that skin cancer scar I've always talked about. I think it's just showing up more now in this camera. I don't know. I feel like it doesn't show up on my chin terrible like a lot of foundations do, but I feel like here it is. That's why I said I don't know if that's just me not blending it well. Well, I'm afraid to put any more. I still feel like I'm blotchy um, in some areas. I'm afraid to put any more because I don't want it to look cakey. So first impression is gonna be if you have aging skin, if you're over 40 like I am, this probably isn't good for you. Or if you have any kind of texture issues like I do. I have acne scarring, um, and I don't mean hyperpigmentation acne scarring, I mean like actual physical texture acne scarring. Um, and I'm starting to show, you know, like lines and wrinkles like right here you know, just fine lines. Um, I don't think it's great for that. It's pretty aging, I feel like. So, I don't know. I'm not loving it for aging skin. And I really am not seeing that huge um, full coverage that I have heard about from this makeup. I feel like you guys can plainly see all my discoloration, which I always have on the tops of my cheeks. Uh, you know, I did pick at this a little because I had dry skin, but it's not covering up this uh, hyperpigmentation from an acne scar, and I have some right here. It's not covering that up either, and you saw how much I put on. Again, I could try more. I mean, we could do that, and I'll just wash it off, I guess, if I don't like it, but the thought of putting more kind of freaks me out right now. So we'll try to use it maybe as a spot concealer and see what it does. Ooh, that's a lot. Typically with a concealer, I'm gonna try to spread some of this around because that was a lot. 
I would use my fingers, so maybe I'll try to do that. Maybe a little around my nose. So it's like quite a bit comes off, you can see right there. So I feel like it's a little hard to spot conceal if you just want a little bit. I feel like it concealed pretty good though, using it that way. Let's see, if I just wanna add a little bit more coverage in some places, let's see what that does. I'm gonna put this back in here. Ooh, that's a lot, I gotta use this. It's not blending out well. it covered this one as much okay so that definitely looks better as far as coverage and on camera I think it looks pretty good in person though I'm still thinking it might be a little cakey I don't know let me zoom you in again okay so this is zoomed in chin cheek area here I don't know, now that I built it up, I'm kind of having mix, mixed feelings about it, but I still feel like right here I can see it. Like it looks like makeup. I don't mind so much looking like I have makeup on, but I don't want it to look settled, if that makes sense. But I can tell just from talking, cause I, you know, I'm pretty, I have a lot of facial expressions when I talk, I can tell it will draw attention here. You know, I've always said, this is my problem, Mary. This is where I'm showing signs of aging first. Fine lines here, and then acne scarring here. Um, I'm definitely, like, I can look in the mirror and I can see it. So for me, I don't know. It's just not that great. I can see if you have younger skin or don't have texture issues, you would probably really like this, but... So I wanted to give a quick update that this picture was taken four hours in, in natural daylight, and I think it looks better. It's definitely one of those, it looks better the longer you have it on. The next day I tried applying it with a Kabuki style flat top brush and absolutely loved the coverage um, better there and it didn't settle into fine lines and problem areas as much. So that's how I would continue to wear it from here on out is with a flat top brush and it really changed my opinion of the foundation. So you guys give me your thoughts what you think it looks like after watching the demo on bare skin and then with a full face of makeup. Um, I didn't touch up anywhere else. I didn't use any other concealer anywhere else except for, you know, my normal under eye concealer. My, like I said, my opinions definitely changed. So I'm not ruling this one out yet. I will be returning the one that's too gold. Um, again, if you're around my skin tone, I would say I'm typically an NW20 in MAC. Um, I, that's a little bit hard to say because I don't love MAC foundation range for me, but if you've watched any of my other foundation videos and you know what shades I typically wear, um, then maybe the number two alabaster will help you with this. And I don't mind my foundations maybe being slightly too dark because then I can just correct on my neck or anything. I feel like if they're too light, sometimes they'll bring attention to some of the imperfections um, that I don't want showing. So let me know your thoughts. Definitely let me know if you've already tried this out or if you're planning to and what your thoughts were about it. I hope you guys found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Great liner. Very smooth.